Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello, welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, on this week's show, to mark World Suicide Prevention Day, I'll be talking with Lee Kenny, qualified therapist and Pieta House Regional Manager for the Greater Dublin Region. Suicide needs no explanation. We all know what it is. But there are so many of us unaware that it can affect absolutely anyone. Every year, suicide accounts for over 800,000 deaths globally. And every single life loss represents someone's partner, child, parent, friend or colleague. Even though attitudes have improved in recent years, there is still somewhat of a stigma surrounding suicide. And to help break down these negative attitudes, we can all play a role in reaching out to someone we think is in need and offering them help. No one should suffer in silence. This month, Pieta House launched their Know Their Signs campaign, which aims to help people recognize suicide warning signs and what we can all do to help if that is the case. Lee Kenny from Pieta House, you're very, very welcome to Real Health. How are you? I'm good. Thanks a million for having us. It's really important to be here and to be able to discuss this topic with you guys. Well, we're delighted to have you on. As, as we were saying before we came on, it's a really important topic people need to, to talk about, to discuss, to learn about, to learn the tools around the warning signs and, and you know how to give people the very the help that they need and what to do. And by talking about it, that's the best way to do it. So it's great to have you on. And it's a really, really important topic. We're delighted to uh, to, 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 to discuss it. Let's start about, I suppose, you know, why people attempt suicide. Let, let's begin there. Well, I suppose um, it's difficult to imagine what led a friend or a family member to attempt suicide or contemplate suicide. Um, often many factors combined together can lead a person to the decision to take their own life. And I suppose um, we find in Pieta that there is no one answer to this. Um, people are reacting to life events or a combined number of life events. And I suppose just for an example where somebody might be experiencing a severe depression, you know, it can take um, a lot out of somebody when they're going through um, that roller coaster of depression where, you know, they feel emotional pain, a great loss of hope um, and be able, not being able to see another way or being able to um, not live life to the way they want to live life. So the pain is really, really overwhelming for them. And, you know, it could lead somebody to think, you know, there is no other way to get through this or to get over this or get around this. And so therefore, uh, the option of ending their life looks like it's a, a viable option for them. Um, for example, as well, somebody who may have had uh, traumatic experiences and maybe, uh, you know, not just one, but a number, a combined number of traumatic experiences, um, you know, for example, childhood sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, um, it could lead uh, to somebody thinking of suicide and they could be at a greater risk of um, experiencing suicidal uh, ideation. Um, and I suppose out of traumatic experiences, we find that depression is a common result um, as post-traumatic stress. And then again, um, that can cause feelings of helplessness and hopelessness, which can lead to someone experiencing suicidal thoughts as well. OK, so it's very much feeling that there, you know, there is nothing else, that it's, it's that hopelessness, it's that... Um that feeling of, of that this is the this is the, the only solution and the only way I can get help. And we know that's very much not the case. Do people attempt suicide to prove something um, or to get sympathy? You know, are there, are there potentially reasons that they would? Well, I suppose, no, um, a suicide attempt um, is um, a very serious act or thought and it should be taken seriously and we would consider that um, somebody thinking about suicide or acting on a suicide in, um, attempt is something that we would as I say take very very seriously and it's a massive warning sign as well um, for people who attempt um, suicide or say that they want to end their life it may be may well be that they're um, seeking attention in a sense um, regarding a call for help a cry for help um, and we we want to be the service that will be there to listen to their cry for help or call for help um, and it's so it's really important that helping them uh, get the support that they need may save their life in that sense and I suppose you know um, people 
who take their own life have often told somebody that they did not feel well or that they felt like this or that life was not worth living and that they had no future. Um, And some may have actually said that they didn't want to live anymore and that they did want to die. Um, It's possible that somebody might talk about suicide as a way of getting help or getting the attention that they really need, again, as a sense um, of calling out for help. And I suppose it is so important to take somebody's um, language like that extremely seriously um, and helping them get the support that they need, again, could potentially save their life. And, you know, you mentioned PTSD and depression. Do alcohol and kind of, you know, substance abuse, do they increase their risk for suicide as well? Well, I suppose we know that um, alcohol and uh, substance misuse, um, you know, can act as an antidepressant uh, or a depressant, sorry. And therefore, if someone is already feeling low, um, it can further impact their low mood and make decisions based on those current feelings and thoughts. Um, And I suppose one of the most critical steps in suicide prevention is overcoming any um, addictions that one may have. And, And I suppose this will alleviate depression and any related mental health uh, symptoms of the individual who's experiencing suicidal thoughts. And I suppose in the long term, um, it can help um, support their short term ju- judgment. Um, and I suppose it will allow any professionals, uh, mental health professionals, to more accurately ex- assess and diagnose any underlying mental health concerns so that we can be in a better position to proper, properly diagnose what is going on and treat that, that diagnosis. And when I say we, I mean professional health um, um, professionals in the mental health um, sector. Yeah. Yeah. Let's chat about COVID then. And in terms of PTSD, as we begin to come out of, uh, hopefully, a year and a half of, of, you know, very stressed, very high stress, high anxiousness around numbers and COVID and the COVID risk factors. Do you think or or do we know that there may be maybe an increase in, in suicide risk off the back of that, that we've been through such a stressful time that people are feeling very, very low? And as we begin to come out of it, the PTSD may be there. To, to lead to an increase in suicide risk for people? Well, I suppose COVID has really catapulted us into another level or layer of having to deal with uh, life. Um, and with that, you know, um, you know, when you think about our young people um, or our college goers, you know, we're, you know, we didn't know whether they were doing their leave insert or not, or their in, uh, junior cert or not. And so, um, you know, there could be a sense of um, loss or, or failure in that piece. Uh, for example, um, you know, academic failure, maybe where they're not feeling that they're getting enough academic um, supports that they need to, to be able to do what it is that they need to do. And I suppose loss of um, a family structure or a friend structure structure or a social structure as well but that feeling of loss or even that fear of loss and uh, not having close relationships like they used to before uh, the pandemic because um, you know we were being asked to socially distance to self-isolate to you know cocoon all of those really good uh, powerful things for to, to, to keep ourselves safe for the greater good so that could have a knock-on effect with that fear piece and that sense of loss regarding connection but also the financial problems that somebody um, may be facing maybe you know their 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 job had to um, reduce their salaries. I know um, that has happened across the board nationally, um, or um, even further loss of job. You know, so that fear, even while you might have your job, but that fear, okay, is my job sustainable? So it has really uh, catapulted us into that feeling of loss. And when we have that fear and that feeling of loss, it can impact you know, our sense of worry and therefore, you know, um, our, our thinking um, can can really be turned up or the volume on our thinking can really be turned up around that area. Folks, you're listening to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Lay Healthcare. It's a really important episode chatting all things around suicide and suicide prevention. And let's head towards that there now. In terms of warning signs then, if someone's listening in either for themselves or, or for a loved one, what are the warning signs? What should they be aware of and what do they need to be to be to be conscious of? Yeah, so here at Pieta, we're helping people be informed. Uh, so we have um, launched our No Signs 
um, No Suicide, No the Science campaign. Um, and this is, I suppose, uh, to prevent uh, people from, you know, attempting to take their life or even, you know, recognising the signs so that, you know, prevention is key and um, so that people can actually understand, OK, this is this is what I'm thinking. This is very, you know, serious. And now I need to maybe act on this. So we, we found that some um Signs may in, may include extreme mood swings, you know, so if it's out of character for somebody to be quite, you know, um, angry about something. And I mean, I know you probably heard of the uh, saying um, um, crying over spilt milk, but it's not about the spilt milk, you know, so it's about maybe a build up of things that have 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 been getting on top of somebody that they can't necessarily navigate themselves through it um, and I suppose again coming back to that feeling of hopelessness you know um, you know maybe people might be saying something like like what's the point or why bother and um, you know so therefore you know not seeing a future um, and again um, you know maybe giving away possessions. So, you know, somebody loves their record uh, collection and then all of a sudden you've been told, hey, listen, I want to gift you my massive record collection. So, you know, the attachment that somebody has to that collection. And this is a bit out of character that somebody would do this because they're not moving to Australia or whatever, um, you know. Um, saying goodbye to family and friends in a way that um, it feels very imminent, you know. Um, also maybe saying stuff like, God, I, I'm such a burden. Um, I don't want to be this burden. I'm sick of being this burden. You know, that can really lead to um, thoughts of, OK, somebody's checking out here. Um, and then being withdrawn is another um, sign where somebody might feel like or seem like um yes they're there in body uh, physically but actually they have um mentally uh, checked out um so there are a few um not 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 all but they are a number of signs that um we we can definitely say um would be recognizable yeah and, and let's just listen to this, the the signs and symptoms they are very similar to depression in many respects in terms mm-hmm. of you know some of those kind of triggers or, or signs can be quite similar to people who are suffering from depression. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, it's that um, severe depression where, you know, there's no energy. There's there's just from from a physical perspective, but from a mental uh, perspective as well, there's no energy. It's 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 very, very tough, um, you know, to motivate, to think even positively um, when you're feeling like this. So it's that knock on effect of the feeling and then the behavior and then, you know, and then what our society is trying to get us to do. And it just feels like a massive, massive of challenge for some people and then that thinking comes in well what's the point and then that thinking of I'm a burden I don't want to be a burden people would be better off without me maybe the world would be better off without me and I suppose that's really important that when when people start feeling like that and thinking like that or friends and family um, start hearing that type of language that um, that's where we need to kind of step in you know and with our um, campaign no suicide no the signs we've asked people that that you know that if you ask somebody directly where you've heard that language if you ask them directly you know are you thinking about suicide or wanting to kill yourself you know um, and not to be afraid about asking that question because we know that anybody who um, is feeling like that um being asked that question directly really supports and helps them be able to go actually yeah um you know okay so it is having that conversation it's not being afraid to use the language or the words and you know it's it's just being being a friend be a be a family member be a partner ask the question don't be afraid to ask the question and just you know enable people to talk about it if they want to if someone's listening in and they are having suicidal thoughts let's talk them through what they should do you know, if they're feeling that way themselves, listening to us have this conversation today, what what do you do? Because you have that sense of hopelessness, you have that sense of no light at the end of the tunnel. What's the what's the the stepping stone process to helping yourself uh, in that situation? You know, the first thing is that somebody has recognised that that's what they're feeling. This is ultimately what's going on for them, and 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 not being ashamed um, of naming it. Um, and I know a lot of people feel very ashamed of even thinking this way um, because um, it, it, it feels like 
they've they're they may be possibly weak or they've let people down or they're not good enough um so when you when you when when somebody feels like that the the natural response or reaction to those kind of feelings and thoughts is to run away from them keep keep hiding keep burying them so it's such a brave thing to do to recognize you know that's that's that that's how I am feeling that's how I am thinking and um you know if I and I know that there are supports out there Pieta is out there I know there's supports are out there mental health services GPs there's a lot of professionals that are out there that can help um and if I could encourage anybody who's listening to just pick up the phone just pick up the phone you know, you will be supported, you will be believed and we will. And there is hope and you aren't on your own around this. This is why Pieta was born, is to support people who are feeling like this and thinking like this. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage somebody to, to to pick up the phone or tell a friend or tell a family member or tell your GP, um, you know, tell somebody um, and that person um, will be able to help and support direct you to a service such as Pieta or your GP um, and get the help that you do need. Okay, so just realise that, you know what, you're not alone. People will help. All you have to do is is to reach out. And if you have a friend or family member who, you know, are having these thoughts, apart from encouraging them to go to counselling, what else can we do? It's really important that we never give up on the person, you know. Um, and as I was saying about, you know, that guilt and maybe that shame of feeling like this, um, you know, you, you could feel like you're being pushed away and that that person doesn't want to know, that person doesn't want uh, to even talk about it. So just never give up on that person um, because, you know, it's out of character, you know, they're not well. Um, and for a person who's, you know, contemplating um, suicide, it is their desire to live. We know that. And we know that the suicidal ideation, I suppose, overshadows um, their thoughts of feeling hopeful. Um, um, and if we can remember that the decision to you know take somebody's life take their own life um it is a desire to stop the suffering but not to end their life so if we know that that is really at the root um of somebody's feelings and thoughts um that that you know they 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 don't want to give up on life they just want the pain to stop let's chat briefly around um adolescents teenagers and raising awareness around suicide in that age group and in that age bracket it is really important again to have those conversations to use the language to have just to be to to not step back from the conversation but actually to have the conversation if you have teenagers at home or anything like that amongst that age group it's important to raise the awareness and also to raise the awareness of what to do with that supports are available there are people to talk to but to basically to have those conversations with that age group yeah no, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, preventative is really the key here for 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 that age group um, and really understanding emotions, because, again, when we think about feelings and emotions um, and life events, that life events do happen. But the key is, is that how we respond to those life events um, and normalize, you know, that that, you know, there are challenges in life, there are changes in life, you know, and, and I suppose when we think about COVID uh, for our young people, there's been huge challenges for our young people and um, trying to get through COVID um, by way of, you know, the education um system by not you know am I going to school am I not going to school am I going to see my friends am I not going to see my friends will I sit my exam will I not so there's a lot of roller coaster there but I suppose it's how we you know normalize that that's okay that's part of life but there are ways that we can deal with it and here's some tips and here's some tools to do that and here's how you recognize um you know what you might need to do and here's how you recognize that that's actually um a feeling of frustration and it's okay to be frustrated it's okay to be angry but it's how we manage them is the key thing so it's our emotions and our feelings and um, that if we can really support our young people in 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 being or being it's okay to be angry but it's how we how we manage it it's okay to be upset but it's how we manage it and that there are people there that can talk to you about that and work through that feeling and possibly work through a plan as well to support in that feeling and finally tell us a bit more about the campaign the know the signs campaign 
Yeah, so we've rolled this out um, um, or we've launched this um, because of the 10th of September that's coming up. Um, you know, we want to we want to break down the stigma. We want to um, really get people talking about, um, you know, it's OK not to feel OK, if you like, and really, you know, support people um, who might have a family or a friend um, or colleague who is um, experiencing, um, you know, low mood or, or thoughts of suicide or feelings of suicide that we can empower them to support loved ones um, and, you know, bring that loved one or, or colleague or friend, uh, whatever um, the person might be, could be neighbour even, uh, or somebody you meet on the street and know that, God, you don't look okay. Are you okay? Do you need help or support? Um, that we can bring that person to a service such as Pieta um, to get the professional help that they do need and deserve as well. Lee, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Folks, a really important episode of Real Health this week. The more we talk about it, the easier it gets for absolutely everybody. If you need help, www.pieta.ie. You can text HELP to 51444 or free phone 1-800-247-247. As ever, you know where we are, at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram, realhealthindependent.ie. And we're back next week with more Real Health. It's long ago, Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.